Equal to the rise in popularity of machine learning methods is the rise in confusion about classification and classification accuracy. Uh, for any method uh, of pr developing predictions of outcomes, one has to settle on a measure of predictive accuracy to optimize. That measure might be mean squared error of predictions. It might be a correlation coefficient, a rank correlation coefficient, uh, and many other choices. And it's very important that one choose what's called in statistics a proper accuracy scoring rule. So a proper accuracy scoring rule is one that is optimized when the model that optimizes it is uh, a reasonable model that's likely to be um, tr a true model in a certain sense. An improper scoring rule is a is a accuracy score that is optimized by a bogus model, and we'll see an example of that uh, in a couple of minutes. Uh, now, an example of an improper accuracy score is the proportion of observations classified correctly. Uh, this is not only an improper score that's optimized by choosing the wrong features and giving them the wrong weights, um, but it is a discontinuous score, so it has a tremendous degree of arbitrariness to it, um, and that means that less information from the data are, is being used, which results in lower statistical power and higher standard errors and classification and classification accuracy are, are extremely arbitrary to the choice of the cutoff. Um, also implies that you're making a binary decision and you're not entertaining a gray zone of intermediate uh, prediction that would dictate more data should be obtained before a decision is made. Importantly, classification is really a type of decision um, and it has a hidden utility function and uh, analysts who do classification are assuming the role of the utility provider which is really quite presumptuous because utilities losses or cost functions should be provided by uh, say in health care would be provided by the patient and the treating physician uh, in addition to proportion classified correct being an improper scoring rule, sensitivity and specificity are also improper scoring rules. They are optimized by um, a wrong model. So here's a simple example in um, this next section um, of, of what happens when you try to optimize an improper scoring rule. Uh, this is a simulated set of data with 400 subjects of whom a fraction 0.57 have disease and we're going to predict the probability of disease using a binary logistic model. If we wanted to use classification accuracy we might classify an observation as uh, diseased, a patient as diseased, if the predicted probability or fitted probability is less than say a half. So if we were to do that uh, and we fit a model that has only age in it, uh, we get 0.62 of the observations are correctly classified in terms of their disease status. Now age alone has an ROC area or concordance probability, C index, of 0.59 and a likelihood ratio chi-square statistic of 10.5. The sixth variable by itself has a somewhat lower C index of 0.59 or 589. Um, it has a likelihood ratio chi-square a little bigger at 12.4, but a lower proportion classified correct using only the sex variable, 0.59. Now adding the age variable to the sex variable, we get a higher C index, as one would expect, and that corresponds to a much higher uh, likelihood ratio chi-square statistic but the proportion correct is 0.6. Now what's interesting about this is the proportion correct is lower than 0.62 which is from a model that contains only age. So by carrying, comparing the 0.62 to the 0.60 one would be tempted to conclude that the sex variable contains negative information. 
and by any other measure that is really seen to be false. So one would um, be misled and would choose a model um, based on classification accuracy with only age. It's interesting to note that if one used none of the variables but only fitted a logistic model with an intercept in it, uh, which would be corresponding to giving everyone the same classification, and if we classified everyone as having disease, uh, we would be right 0.57 of the time. Uh, so if you can get about the same accuracy using no data as using the sex of the person um, and not much lower than using the age, that's really exposing the defects in classification accuracy in a quite simple way. Now there's a paper by uh, Michaels et al. that serves as an example of how using a discontinuous improper accuracy score can give you a false conclusion in a certain line of research. So uh, the paper was an important paper because it showed that up until that point in time uh, the kinds of analyses that were commonly done of gene micro microarray data were um, yielding publications and padding CVs uh, but uh, the results were really unlikely to be true, unlikely to validate. Um, and um, Michaels et al. found a number of de defects in how um, the research was being done. And one of the defects was they were, it was commonly the case that, that the research was using single split sample validation on small samples, which is notoriously unstable. Uh, so they redid uh, the, the um, analyses using multiple splits of the data. Um, and when they did that, uh, using this more precise and stable way, they concluded that there was not only not good predictive ability in these uh, gene microarray data sets, there was no signal whatsoever. Uh, so Aliferis et al. Uh, redid the analyses of Michaels et al., Instead of using an improper accuracy score that's discontinuous and information losing, Aliferis et al. used the C-index, which is a semi-proper accuracy score, uses much more of the information to use the ROC area. Uh, instead of doing single split sample validation, Aliferis et al. did multiple repeats of tenfold cross-validation, which, which gives high precision. Uh, the Michaels paper also used the wrong statistical test for association that did not take into account variable follow-up duration or censoring and in the redo uh, the correct tests were used such as the Cox proportional hazards model. So instead of concluding as uh, Michaels did that seven, five of seven published microarray studies analyzed had no signal whatsoever uh, the conclusion was that six out of seven indeed uh, did have a signal.